Hey guys, so this video is about some of the less obvious things about living on a narrowboat that hadn't occurred to me when I was first thinking about this lifestyle. Hope you enjoy it. The noise. Some people obviously are quite sensitive to noise and so this is quite relevant I think for maybe those people. First thing to think about is that the narrowboat skin, the hull if you like, the difference between you and the outside is a lot thinner than it is in a house. You just got a thin piece of steel with some insulation and then it's basically the outside world and whatever's going on in the outside world you're that much closer to it in a respect. You kind of have the noises that humans make and nature I guess for want of a better way of putting it. When I have moored up in town centers and that I've heard tales of boaters having issues with youths and things jumping on their roof of their boat oh, I haven't had anything quite like that I did have to chase a boater off of my boat once but that turned out to be a misunderstanding because he was a little bit drunk now the nature aspect of the noise is something which is much more apparent and is there pretty much constantly for example rain like the first time I heard it on my metal roof I was like oh that's quite a pleasant sort of tinkling sound and then after a while that's not pleasant anymore that's just annoying and it gets frustrating and especially if it's quite stormy and the boat is thrashing about the wind is howling the rain is crashing down and you're trying to get to sleep that can definitely be something that is worth mentioning if you're sensitive to sound because that is something that I had not prepared myself for at all but then to be honest with do aside from getting more insulation there's, there's not really much you can do about it so you just have to kind of get used to it the final aspect of the nature side of it what i would say would be all of the animals everything from mooing cows to ducks geese and swans there's a particular group of geese that hang around by my boat that for some reason at about three o'clock in the morning they always have a bit of a ruckus and it gets really loud and when there's a whole flock of geese all making noise all at once you'd be surprised how loud that can be actually the final part i'd probably make is the the internal sounds within the boat you get very used to what your boat sounds like when everything's behaving normally and you kind of become hyper aware of things like pumps and like my fridge and that but that's not necessarily a bad thing I think that's probably quite a good thing to be aware of things that are going on around your boat so there you go noise on a narrow boat I hope that helps some of you One of the most hotly debated subjects of living on a narrowboat is toilets. And rather than just talking about toilets, I'm going to talk about waste management in general. The nearest bins that I can put my rubbish into, that's about a half an hour walk. If I have loads and loads of rubbish building up, that is quite difficult to get rid of. I've had to change my habits surrounding that, if you like. Now, in terms of the toilet aspect of it, I have a separating toilet. So it separates up the two various types of produce a human being makes. I knew that I didn't want a pump out and I knew that I didn't want a cassette toilet. And this is an important fact here, is about the difference between doing all the research and understanding the principle of it and then actually living that experience. I then started to get into the idea of actually turning that into some sort of compost. Now I'm not quite there yet, I'm still in the early stages, my ultimate goal is to perhaps grow something with my own produce. Make produce from my produce, if you like. It's kind of difficult talking about the whole toilet aspect because you don't want to get too graphic with it. It's good. It's the good choice for me. so I'd like to take this moment to talk about something which I guess is a little bit more serious. That's the subject of isolation on a narrowboat. Of the community of narrowboats that live nearby me, I'd say about two thirds of people that live on them are living by themselves. That's something I think that people should consider because I don't think I truly gave that enough weight. The best thing about living on a narrowboat, which is being in the midst of nature, and in my case, being quite far away from like modernity. The plus points to that are obviously the beautiful views that I share with you guys. One of the negative aspects of it is that you are quite often on your own. When I'm feeling good, that's an amazing thing. 
and I can do whatever I want. I'm the master of my own destiny, if you like. But there are other days when perhaps your mental health isn't as great and you are feeling a little bit low. I guess if I was to give some advice to somebody who was thinking about living on an airboat by themselves, I would say try to build into your day times when you kind of have to see people. It can be very easy just to live in your little narrowboat bubble and not really leave your boat sometimes, especially if like me, you're self-employed and you can work from home. I hope that helps somebody. So another thing that I didn't necessarily realize when I first got my narrow boat, which was kind of a giveaway because it's in the name really, is how narrow a narrow boat is. You know, you look at them and they look quite quaint and until you get inside, you don't really realize how much space you're dealing with. It's 65 foot long, but six foot 10 inches wide. If I lay down in my boat on the floor, then my feet touch one wall and my head touches the other wall. One of the major things that I had to do was just get rid of loads of my stuff. Over the years, you collect a lot of stuff that maybe you don't necessarily need. And I ended up making sure I built in lots of like storage spaces. So you have to be quite creative. You, know, you need to use every last ounce of space. Now, interestingly, I'm completely used to it. I'm used to living in small spaces and I, I think I actually quite like it. It's easier to make them cozy, easier to tidy up. There's just not an option of filling your boat with lots of stuff that you don't really need. Sometimes people still come on with a boat and they go, uh, oh, it's a bit narrow. <laughs> the giveaway is the name. <laughs> Okay, so I want to talk about privacy on a narrow boat. This is something that I hadn't really thought about that much when I was considering moving onto a boat. The first experience I had of it was when I lived in a marina initially when I was fitting out my narrow boat. You're kind of like packed in like sardines and often your windows align with the other boat. You can see straight into their boat and they can see straight into your boat. It's a very different definition of privacy than you're used to in a house. You get to know your neighbors quite intimately, whether you want to or not. And then when I finally got my boat fitted out and it was all done and then I moved officially onto the canal that was a completely different experience because it's rare when you're moored up on the canal that you will have a boat next to you to the side of you like you do in a marina occasionally does happen if the mooring spot is particularly busy and somebody will come alongside you and say uh, can I moor up there but most of the time on the canal people moor up in front or behind you and so that's slightly different they can't necessarily stare directly into your boat like they can in a marina and so then privacy concerns shift then from being about other boaters to being about the general public. It kind of divides into sort of two sections really. People that are quite benign and don't really care about your boat. In my case, on the river, you are moored right next to the Thames Path. And so there's a constant flow of people walking their dogs, just going out for a walk with their family. But then you obviously get people which are called gongoozlers, which are people that have an interest in boats and they can be more interesting. Occasionally, you do get people which just don't really understand the social etiquette about it. When I was moored outside Reading Abbey, I had a family actually get onto the back of my boat and they were basically taking a selfie. When I opened my stand doors to sort of politely ask them what they were doing, they were like, oh, we thought this was part of the attraction. <laughs> they were very apologetic, so that was absolutely fine. But the point is, is that there's levels of sort of invasion of your privacy that I just hadn't even thought about. But you know, as long as people are respectful and as long as they don't get on your boat without permission, then everything's absolutely fine, really. I hope that helps anybody that's thinking of buying a boat and helps you to understand maybe some of the things that I didn't understand straight away. So, cheers. So what did you think of that? Is any of that a revelation? Things that you'd never thought of before? Hopefully you learned a few things from it. I know I have learned it and that's why I made the video. Thanks as always for supporting the channel guys. As usual, like and subscribe in the comments. Let me know about any other video ideas you have and I shall see you in a couple of weeks. Cheers, bye bye.